Oh, uh, I should probably mention, my hands are not symmetrical. That is an alpaca. And while you may not believe me, there's a couple of people who live in Finland who very much wanted it to be called an alpaca with two Ks. And those people are input labs. Let's, uh, let's have a look at their website before we dig into the controller itself, shall we? The alpaca, as described by Input Labs, is their flagship design. Now, it isn't finished yet. Um, as the design goes, there's still a few built-in profiles, which will be important. I'll discuss that a bit later. There's also no wireless mode, which means you will need to find yourself a micro USB cable. Naughty, should be type C, but it does use a Raspberry Pi Pico for its microcontroller. So yeah, the, um, the port on the Pico is a micro USB, so that's what we use. And that's, you know, fair enough. There's no vibration, which doesn't really bother me. They could even do haptics if uh, space concern inside the shell of the alpaca is a big concern. Uh, but it is absolutely 100% uh, working as it is. You just need to keep in mind that not all the profiles are there, so you may have to fine-tune the controls in-game for you to uh, be able to play with it. So, the alpaca, the actual physical thing. It is, well, very, very light, especially compared to uh, the dual sense down there of the all the other controllers that I have. You know, not counting the ones with the wires, like the uh, If You or the DualShock 2, the blue one in the corner there. Um, I Even the Steam controller uh, is heavier. But yeah, no, this, you know, being made out of PLA, it is very, very light. That's not a bad thing. Um, even when you add, you know, the weight and the stiffness of the cable, it does, it, you don't feel tired just holding it while playing at all. You will feel tired if you're not used to gyro activity, uh, having to actually physically rotate the controller or move it up and down to um, and use the gyro. Oh, uh, I should probably mention, my hands are not symmetrical. So yes, controllers are kind of a big deal for me specifically, because to this day, I have yet to find one that is perfect. That 8-bit do there is probably the one that came the closest, but it's dead. So I just use the DualShock 4 because that is the second best, at least from my experience, from my own personal preference. Back to the alpaca. It is not a standard controller. As you can tell, there's a scroll wheel like I mentioned earlier. There's a little uh, joystick clicky nubby thing instead of the right analog stick. There's a regular left analog stick. There's uh, two extra buttons under uh, start and select, though those two are fairly common when we're talking about third-party controllers, so that's nothing much. Uh, there's your bumpers and your triggers, the two connections, the micro USB one and the JST one. There's a little flappy door here, which I presume will be the compartment where the uh, the battery will live once this becomes wireless. And of course, the two mandatory buttons on the back. But the important thing, and the thing that makes the alpaca work as well as it does, is the fact that it has not one, but two. Two gyros uh, built in, and according to Input Labs, um, from what they answered to uh, one of the questions on Discord was, why does it have two gyros? Well, it is very... Um, Gyros by themselves are prone to drifting. There's also, uh, they, they also describe in the manual uh, on their website how you can calibrate it to make sure that they don't drift. But having two means it is that much more accurate and that far less likely to drift. The way that the alpaca makes up for its less than traditional layout, um, although still based very much in what you'd call the standard, it is by using this, uh, well, the two gyros that I mentioned earlier and this particular hexagon of um, conductive PLA. What it does is, as you're touching it, 
even if you have uh, happened to accidentally touch it while holding down one of the buttons, they're actually working on that. They're trying to find a way so that people are less likely to hit it accidentally, even when they don't want to. But yeah, if you touch the uh, bit of conductive PLA, it enables the two gyros and they they do a very good job of tracking uh, the motion of the controller. There's a couple of sensitivity settings built into the Alpaca. There's one for 1080p, one for 1440p, and one for UHD, 2160p. Let's talk quibbles. I, well, if it wasn't entirely obvious, um, I have some quibbles about this controller like I have with every other controller that I've ever played with. Uh, this one, it cuts it very close to being almost perfect, but there is a couple of things that I would change. Specifically, I would move um, the maybe move the home button up here where the LEDs are. Maybe put the LEDs like in a row down here, and then scooch the um, scroll wheel down to the middle and have instead of this uh, clicky joystick thingy another analog stick that 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 very much for me would be a start uh then the uh little bit of conductive pla to enable the gyro needs to be well it needs to be made smaller they are working on it like um there's a bunch of people uh who brought it up in discord it's like okay i'm accidentally enabling this so is there a way we can change it and Input labs are aware of it. They're trying to revise the um, current implementation to see if it would work. Me personally, if I could, I'd very much like to have this uh, little flap here be the conductive bit of PLA so that I could, while I'm playing it, just reach my finger over here and while it's there, just have the gyro enabled. Uh, other than that, the triggers. These, as you can see, at an angle I can show you, not a whole lot of travel on those. In fact, it barely looks like they're moving at all. Yeah, that's it. That That's the level of actuation that we're dealing with. Uh, there's a lot of PLA sitting on a very, very sensitive button, uh, so it feels... Well, it, you will uh, accidentally tap one of the triggers without meaning to. I've done it, and you probably will too. It is... <laughs> that needs changing. I'm not saying, you know, do the full analog travel one, just pick some stiffer buttons, or uh, buttons that actually have some travel to them, and they only actuate after a couple of mil instead of... instantly. Yeah, that, that, that would be nice. Uh, other than that, it is just about the right size. I'd probably make it a little bit smaller for me. Just because my right hand, I don't have quite as much reach. So, I mean, uh, if I want to use the uh, right bumper, which is the button that I end up using the least in games, I just use the thumb so I can't use the right bumper at the same time that I'm using the um, face buttons here. Yeah, that that's a me thing. But let's, instead of just me waffling... Let's, uh, let me show you what happens in game. Right. And our very first game is, well, it's Elden Ring. Of course, it's me. Of course, we're going to use Elden Ring as an example. You see that violent camera wiggle there? That, that is, uh, very much me, um, fighting with the controller because I just wanted to hold down B so I would sprint and I accidentally pressed a bit of conductive PLA. So, of course, the camera started shaking as I was adjusting my finger on, on the button. That's why that particular um, implementation for the conductive PLA is not the best. But if you're doing what I'm doing here, which is just lock on and away we go, it's fine. It, it's absolutely fine, though. The moment you have to use the camera and you have to do the gyro ratcheting to get the camera all the way around you, or at least 180 uh, around you, it will take some getting used to. But that's that's gyros for you. Some people uh, click with it immediately, others not so much. And I think I'm still in the latter camp, except for a couple of specific situations. 
We don't go to Ravenholm, but we sure play some Half-Life 2 with the alpaca. Yeah. Uh, I already had two games that uh, Input Labs didn't have on their website as, you know, a recommended having a recommended uh, profile or that they had officially tested, uh, put their seal of approval on. So I figured, you know what, Let, let's find a game that I have that they have uh, on their list and we'll we'll see. I mean. Why not? So they had Half-Life 2. They also had Noita. I also have Noita. But I, I just couldn't get on with that. With Half-Life, well, you, you can see. Uh, I ended up using the console uh, profile for Half-Life 2 just because... Well, just because the uh, FPS uh, WASD configuration or the FPS Fusion um, profile that they recommend for it is not it would require it would have required me to rebind uh my controls a lot so i decided you know what no let's just use the console one and i much prefer the weapon wheel by using the d-pad than the alternative by using the little joystick where the right analog stick used to be so this ended up working much much better for me this controller is amazing and it is very much the embodiment of everything that's awesome about open source and the Linux community in general. Even if the Alpaca isn't necessarily Linux specific, quite the opposite. Uh, it has uh, built in modes for Windows and for Linux. So clearly it works. And if you're curious, it uses X input for um, the controller mode, it uses X input. The WASD or FPS fusion profiles, uh, they, of course, uh, it's like W A S D, but yeah, it is, it is a genuinely, genuinely good controller. And it, it, it still hasn't fully sunk in for me. Just it's all open source. You can do it yourself. Unlike literally any of the others on this screen on your screen right now that one you can diy that one from the ground up that's amazing and input labs seriously i very much look forward to the capybara yes they are working on a one-handed controller that they're naming the capybara i'm sure a certain matthew commandant may be very very happy with that but that is genius very well done I love it. Keep improving on it. Keep developing for it. And to everyone in the community uh, who are aware of Input Labs or who were made aware of Input Labs, thanks to this video or the written review attached to it, by all means, go to their Discord server. Hit up their Patreon. It's just patreon.com forward slash Input Labs and support them. It is genuinely that easy to completely shake up the controller market. And if you like what you saw here today, yes, we're back to Elden Ring. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> if you like what you saw here today, by all means, you know, click the subscribe button down below. This will be on YouTube, right? Uh, if not, then uh, ignore that particular bit and just go to linuxgamecast.com or patreon.com forward slash linuxgamecast and um, have a look. See for yourself whether or not you'd like to support what it is that we do. If you do, by all means, uh, put your money where your proverbial mouth is, and we shall see you, well, next Saturday. How's that? Sound good? Good. I'll see you then.